today we're going to make a granny square. And the reason for this is twofold. One, we got some requests to make something nice and simple and basic. And two, this is probably one of the most important patterns that you'll ever have in your repertoire of a crochet encyclopedia. I think it's, uh, it's, it's got so many uses. I could literally sit here for half the night and tell you all the different things that I've made out of granny squares, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm just going to teach you how to make a granny square, and I'm also going to show you some of the afghans that I've made, just to give you a little idea of, of how differently these squares can be employed, at least as far as afghans are concerned. If you want to get into making um, anything else, well, maybe we'll, we'll approach that down the road, but anyway, uh, we're just going to jump right into this tutorial, so grab your hook and grab your yarn and let's go to the table. Okay, so things you need to make a granny square. Today I'm going to use my favorite hook, although if you're just starting and um, you want to make something a little, a little easier, then you can use a bigger hook. 5.5 millimeters, the hook that I started with. When I make uh, an afghan, if I sit down to make an actual afghan, I use a 7 millimeter hook. It's big. Um, it creates a nice big loose stitch and if you're going to be making an afghan with your um, squares down the road you want to actually think in terms of um, bendability because you want a blanket to bend over you but if you're going to be using them to make um, a skirt or an item of clothing you might actually want to make it a little tighter in which case you might want to use a smaller hook this is my favorite hook um, I've grown used to the feel of it in my hands so that's why I'm going to use it but you can use any hook you want you're going to need a pair of scissors and you're going to need a yarn needle, um, but this isn't as important as it maybe is with some other things. So, uh, but it's just good to have it around. Today, we're going to do uh, a granny square that changes color, and I'm going to show you how to do that um, because if you want to do it down the road, you can. If you just want to make it a solid color, you can. It uh, doesn't actually change the pattern, it's just um, kind of a neat way to change color if you're not used to, to doing color changes. So. That's the only reason. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. So we're going to start, I'm going to use this pretty turquoise to start with, and we're going to make a slip knot instead of a cinch circle like I do a lot of other projects. So to start, we're going to make a slip knot. And to make a slip knot, you hold your yarn and you make a loop. And you take your, your long working yarn and you pull it up through your loop like this, and then you just Pull both those ends and you can put that loop over your hook and that's why they call it a slip knot. Now from here we're going to chain four and you chain by taking your working yarn and you wrap it around your hook and you pull it through that loop. It's kind of like if you've ever made daisy chains. Um, so it's you wrap, pull it through the loop and wrap and pull it through the loop and since we're making four we're going to do one more so wrap pull it through the loop and always count so you take a look at your chain and you see one two three and four you never count the loop that's still on your hook that technically isn't a stitch we're going to start by making the center of the granny square and this is the center of the granny square and we're going to make this hole. So you're going to take your chain length, you're going to take your hook and you're going to go through the first chain that you made. So you're going to do that. It's going to look like this on your hook. You're going to wrap your working yarn around your hook and we're going to slip stitch which means you're going to pull that yarn through both of the loops that are sitting on your hook. So just like that. And you've created a loop. And you should be able to just wrap it around the end of your finger like that. Obviously if you're using a bigger hook, you might be able to put it completely down your finger. And that is the center of the granny square. All the work we do in row one goes into this hole. So instead of using the individual stitches, you're just going to work through this hole. And that's the hole that's in the center of your work. So this thing here that you can put your finger through. So to begin, because we're going to be using the double crochet stitch, we're going to chain three more. So we've chained four, we've joined it with a slip stitch, we're going to chain three. So that's wrap, pull through the stitch, 
wrap, pull through the stitch, wrap, and pull through the stitch. And whenever a pattern tells you to chain three or chain two or chain one before you start the stitches you're going to do, it's because you need to bring your working stitches up to the height that the rest of your stitches are going to be equal to. So this chain three that you just made actually counts as a double crochet. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So we're going to create our first shell. This is a shell. You can see that there's four of them very clearly in the center of this granny square. And a shell is made up of three double crochet stitches. And in this case, it's one of the double crochet stitches is going to be the chain three. And it's difficult to tell, but that's the chain three that I originally started with. So you can see how it ends up looking like one of the double crochets, which is why you don't have to worry about it looking strange or that it won't fit in with the rest of your stitches. So to complete this shell, because technically we've already done the first stitch in this shell, we're going to do a double crochet. And a double crochet stitch, and this is American terminology, not British, but a double crochet is you wrap your yarn around your hook, you go through the hole that you're working in, in this case it's the center of that loop we made, you grab the yarn, and you can wrap it around your hook, or you can just grab it with your hook, however you feel comfortable, you pull it back through that hole so that this is what you have on your hook. You've got three loops. So you've got the stitch you started with, the wrap you made before you went through the hole, and the yarn that you grabbed and pulled back through the hole. One, two, three. And a double crochet is wrap your yarn once again, pull it through the first two loops on your hook. You now have two loops on your hook. Wrap that yarn around your hook one more time and pull it through those two loops. That is a double crochet stitch. And that, as you can see, is the same height as the chain three that we did to start the row. And now that is two thirds of a shell stitch completed. So we're going to do one more double crochet. And that is wrap your yarn around your hook, go through your stitch or your working hole, Grab your yarn, pull it back, you have one, two, three loops on your hook, wrap your yarn around your hook, pull it through the first two loops so that you're left with two loops, wrap your yarn around your hook, pull it through the last two loops, and you've just completed another double crochet. And that is your first shell. And you can see that it looks just like this one. Now, because the first row is technically um, only four shells, and each shell equals a side to that square, we also now have to put in four corners. And we're going to do our first corner. Corners are really, really easy. You're going to chain two. So you wrap your yarn around your hook, pull it through the loop. That's one. Wrap your yarn around your hook, pull it through the loop. That's two. That is going to be a corner, and this is the magic of a granny square. You won't actually see that corner until you get into your second row and you turn your first corner and then the lights will go on. This is my favorite part about teaching granny squares to people, because it all looks like a whole lot of weird stitches, and then you turn the first corner on your second row and all of a sudden it looks like a square. It's really cool. So now, because we've done basically this shell and what's going to be that corner, we're going to do our next shell. And a shell is three double crochet stitches. So we're going to wrap our yarn around our hook, go through the center, grab our yarn, pull it back up. You've got one, two, three loops on your hook. Wrap your yarn around your hook, go through the first two. Wrap your yarn around your hook, go through the second two. Double crochet. Now we're going to do it again. Wrap through the hole, grab the yarn, pull it back, wrap, go through the first two loops, wrap, go through the second two loops. And that's two. We're going to do it one more time and that's going to complete shell number two. So you wrap, go through the hole,
grab the yarn, pull it back, wrap, go through the first two loops, wrap, and go through the second two loops. Now, that's side two. We're going to put in the second corner, and a corner is two chains. So we wrap, we go through the hole, or I should say the stitch, we wrap, and we go through that stitch, and that's one, two. Two chains, that equals corner number two. Now we're gonna do the third shell, which is three more double crochets. So we wrap, go through the hole, grab the yarn, wrap, go through the first two loops, wrap, go through the last two loops. We're gonna do it two more times. So wrap through the hole, grab your yarn, wrap, go through the first two loops, wrap, go through the last two loops. That's two. One more double crochet, wrap, go through the hole, grab the yarn, pull it back, wrap, go through the first two loops, wrap, go through the last two loops. That's shell number three. And as you can see, the hole, the center, this, this middle of the actual granny square is starting to become more defined. And the more stitches you put into it, the, the rounder and more defined it is, which makes it also easier to see while you're working into it. So, now that we've come to the end of this shell, we have to put in another corner. So we're going to chain two, which is wrap, pull through the loop, wrap, pull through the loop. That's two chains, that's corner number three. Last shell, so if you're still with me, we're almost finished, row one. The last shell, like the other three, has three double crochet stitches in it. So we wrap, go through the center, grab that yarn, pull it back, one, two, three. Wrap, pull through two, wrap, pull through two. And now we do two more. Wrap, go through the hole, grab the yarn with your hook, pull it back, one, two, three, wrap, go through two, wrap, go through two. One more. Now, if it's starting to look like it's encroaching on your previous stitches, this is the nice thing about a granny square. You can be kind of rough with it. Just, just pull them back and give yourself a little more working space. We're going to do our last stitch now. So we're going to wrap, go through the hole, grab the yarn, pull it back, wrap, go through the first two, wrap, and go through the last two. You've now completed the fourth shell in your first row. You have one, two, three corners. You need to make one last corner to complete this, this square. So we're going to wrap and go through the loop, wrap and go through the loop. That's two chains. That's your final corner. And to join, you're going, you've come around the corner, you're back to your first stitch, which is technically the one, two, three chains that you made at the very beginning of the row. You're going to count one, two, three, and into that top chain, or the third chain, you're going to insert your hook for a slip stitch. So you insert your hook in that stitch, that third chain, wrap your yarn around the hook, pull it back through everything, because that's a slip stitch. Now this is something you should do at the end of every row when you make a granny square. You put your square down, and it looks a little round right now. You identify your four corners, put your fingers in them, and just give it a gentle tug outwards. So that identifies your corners, and you can see this, this little square starting. And if you're, you know, not a tight knitter or not a loose knitter or you, you haven't quite found your style yet, this might look a little, a little awkward or a little round or a little fluffy. Don't worry about it because the second row is going to pull it all into shape for you. Now, this is entirely up to you. If you want to flip your work, you can. You can do, every, at the end of every row, you can flip your work. Um, and you can keep going with the same color. 
or you can take your hook and slip stitch into this hole so you see this corner it's always nice to start in a corner so if you want to continue in the same color then you're going to put your hook backwards so you're you're technically going this way but you're just going to backwards into this hole beside you which is the corner grab your yarn and just slip stitch into that hole just so you're working in that corner that's if you want to re re keep going in the same color for those of you who want to change colors you're just going to snip your yarn just a little tiny snip you don't need a lot of tail and just fasten off so you just pull it back through your working loop pull it tight that creates a knot and here's where you use your uh, yarn needle you'll just slip your needle through some of the stitches here from your row one and put the tail through the yarn eye needle the eye needle I should say and just pull it through and if that doesn't completely bury it then just pull it through a few more stitches I like to do this as I go it just makes things neat and tidy and uh, you can work in the other ones later it also gets that tail out of your way so that you don't accidentally try to use it and uh, there so that is this and I know it's a little difficult to see right now but once we get the second row done you will so I'm gonna change colors so I'm done with my pretty little turquoise and I'm gonna move to this nice soft green color I'm going to hope that it doesn't knot up on me. There we go. So if you're changing colors with me, we're going to start the same way. We're going to create a slip knot. So that's you take your yarn and you create a loop and you pull that yarn through and you just tug on it slightly and you create a slip knot. You're going to join it in the corner. Any corner, doesn't matter. Just pick a corner. And you do that by putting the loop on your hook, sticking your hook into that corner, and you just get that little tail out of the way. You're going to use your working yarn, and you're going to wrap it around your hook, and pull it back through that hole and through that loop, and that affixes it to your granny square. And we're going to work into the corner. Now, this is an important thing to remember. Once you're finished with your first row, it's easy to remember that the corners of all successive rows is shell, chain, chain, shell. Shell, chain, chain, shell. Get used to saying it in your head because after a while you're going to be sleeping with it, running through your head over and over and over again. Shell, chain, chain, shell. That is a corner. And a corner is uh, technically this shell chain chain shell and because the first row is only four shells and four corners the whole thing is corners basically so that's why row two is so important so we're going to start row two now this is if you change your yarn if you kept the same color doesn't matter this is this row starts exactly the same way so you're going to chain three which is wrap pull through the loop wrap pull through the loop wrap pull through the loop that's chain three. That chain three counts as your first double crochet. You've brought your working loops up to the same height that that stitch is going to continue at. And into this same hole, this corner hole here, we're going to double crochet twice more to create the first shell of your first corner of row two. Wrap, go through the corner hole, grab your yarn, pull it back, one, two, three, Wrap your yarn, pull through your first two loops. You should have two left. Wrap, go through two. That is the first double crochet. Technically, the second stitch of that first shell, as you can see. One more, we're gonna wrap, go through the corner hole, grab the yarn, pull it back. One, two, three. Wrap, go through the first two, wrap, go through the second two and that is the first shell of the first corner of row two to complete a corner remember you need two chains chain 
chain. And to complete this corner, we need a second shell. And that's three more double crochets. And here we go. We wrap, we go through the hole, we grab our yarn, we pull it back, wrap through two, wrap through two. That's one, two more. Wrap through the hole, grab your yarn, pull it back, wrap, go through two, wrap, go through two. That's two. One more, wrap. And done. That is the first corner completed. So there's your center of the granny square and the first corner of row two. Now because we're on a complete side, this is where um, the pattern changes just a little bit. So instead of just continuing to double crochet into the next hole, which is technically the next corner, on a straightaway, or I should say, on a, a, a square side. So the sides are going to start getting longer and longer and longer. And by the time you've gotten to say row four, you've got your you've got a flat side happening. And in between each shell stitch, or so each set of three double crochets, which is a shell, in between each shell, along a side, you want to put a single chain. Now you don't have to do this. I was technically taught before uh, when I first did my granny squares, you don't have to, but I just find it gives it a nice loose openness and uh, it just makes for a, a slightly more manageable square. So I recommend putting a single chain in between each of the shells on a flat side. So that's what I'm going to teach you now. Because this is technically our first side, we're going to chain one. And now, we're going to work into the next hole. The next hole just happens to be a corner hole. So we're going to do another corner, which is shell, chain, chain, shell. <laughs> and here we go. Wrap through the corner hole, grab your yarn, pull it back, wrap and go through two, wrap and go through two. That's one double crochet. There we go. That's two double crochets, and one more completes the shell. And there you go. Now, we're going to complete the corner with two chains and another shell. So we're still working into this hole, but first we're going to put two chains in between this shell and the next one. There's our two chains. Now we're still working into the corner hole because we have to complete the corner with the next shell. So we're going to do three more double crochets into this corner. So we wrap, go through the hole. You should be hearing my voice in your head saying wrap and wrap and wrap. <laughs> and one more double crochet. Okay, now, this is what I call turning the second corner. This is your center. This is the first corner you made. You put a chain in between those two shells because technically they create a flat side. Just like this one, just like this one, and if you had a, a granny square the size of this desk, it would be so many shells by so many shells, and in between each shell along the side, you want to have a single chain. It just creates this nice, manageable, flat side. Two chains, and it bends a corner. I love the physics in that. There's something about the math in that that I, I just don't fully understand, but I love it. Two chains gives you a corner. One chain gives you a nice, flat side. You'll know if you've messed up. <laughs> if you've put two chains in the wrong place because all of a sudden you'll have a fifth or a sixth corner and you'll be going, that doesn't really look that square anymore. So you'll know if you've confused yourself and put in a corner where you shouldn't. So you can, and don't feel bad, just rip it out to the, the next, 
the next place where you know you didn't make any mistakes and just continue on. We're going to continue. So now we're going to do what looks like this up this side. And because we've completed a shell and we're technically working up the next side, we have to chain one like that. And now we're going to start working into the next hole. Well, the next hole just happens to be another corner. So we're going to do another corner, which is shell, chain, chain, shell. And shell is three double crochet. And here we go. We're going to double crochet into this corner hole. And we're going to do that once and twice and three times. Three double crochets equals one shell. That's the first of two shells in the corner. We're going to chain two. One, two, and now we're going to complete that corner by putting the second shell or three more double crochets into this corner hole. So we wrap our yarn, go through that hole, grab the yarn, pull it back, wrap through the first two, wrap through the second two. One double crochet. You got to do two more double crochets, still into the same hole, because two double crochets is not a full shell, but three double crochets is a full shell. Now, if you get into really fancy stitches down the down the road, like uh, there's a pattern called the Japanese fan stitch, which I'm really fond of. It's um it's actually five double crochets into the same hole and it creates literally what looks like a fan and it's just beautiful but three equals a shell and two chains in between two shells equals a corner so we have three corners now so we are three quarters of the way done row number two so we're going to do one more chain one because we're on a side so we're going to chain and now we're going to work into our next hole which happens to be a corner. So we're going to do one more corner, which is shell, chain, chain, shell. So we're going to double crochet three times. All into that same hole. And I'm going to let you guys work your way through it. That's three, so that's my first shell. Now I'm going to chain two so I can turn a corner. Chain one, chain two, that gives me a corner. We're going to shell into the same hole, so three more double crochets. Still into that same corner hole. That's two, and one more. That's three. Okay, so you think that we're done, but we're not. Let's recap. We've got a shell to start, chain two, and a shell. That is a corner. Because this is the first time that we've kind of started to create a, an actual side, we've chained one in between these two sets of shells to give us that nice flat side. The next set of shells took us into another corner, so we went shell, two chains, shell, another side, so we chained one in between these two sets. We did this four times. Now because we began this row with a shell, so we chained three to equal a double crochet, we need to put that straightaway stitch in between these two sets of shells. So we're going to chain one. This is going to complete our fourth side. And we're going to identify, we're going to count up, one, two, three. We're going to look at that first chain three that we did. 
identify the third chain or just whatever's sitting at the top, stick our hook into it, and we're going to slip stitch through everything, which is wrap the yarn around your hook and just hook it right back through everything. And that is row two. I'm now going to create row three. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to continue in the same color. So if you uh, are still continuing in the same color, you don't have to do anything special. Um, but this is just what it looks like if you're continuing in the same color. So because I like everything to, to all the stitches to face the same way, and because I like working in to start with in holes, I'm just going to slip stitch backwards into this hole. So I'm just going to take my hook and go through that hole, grab the yarn, and just pull it through that loop. And that pretty much puts me in this hole to work with. So when you've finished your rows, identify your corners and just stick your fingers and thumbs in them and just pull it out. Now you can clearly see at this point that we are getting an actual square happening. There is nothing circular about this. It actually looks a little bit like a flower. This is sort of one of the nice effects of changing colors. If you weren't changing colors, forget this blue outline, but it'll look something like this. There's your center and there's your second row. They're both beautiful and I just love gray squares because of that. However, for demonstrative purposes, I'm showing you so that you can clearly see the two different rows by changing color. I'm going to do row three in the same green, and then I'm going to do row four in a different color again, just to, to show you the So, differences. row three. <clears throat> we're going to consider this the first hole we're going to do any work in. So technically we're starting on a side. So we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And the act of chaining three is creating our first double crochet. And into this nice, big, obvious hole here, we're going to double crochet twice more to complete our first shell. So we're going to wrap, go through the hole, grab our yarn, pull it back, wrap, go through two, wrap, go through two. That's two. And one more. Wrap through the hole, wrap your yarn, wrap, go through two, wrap, go through two. So that's our first shell. Now you'll notice that this shell is in the middle of the side of the square. It is obviously not in a corner because that's a corner and that's a corner. And in order to get to the corner, we need to chain one because we're still finishing the side. So we're going to chain one and that chain one takes us to the corner. Now we're in the corner hole. Now we can do our corner shells, which is shell, chain, chain, shell. So we're going to double crochet three times into this new corner hole. That's one. And always make sure that you, you keep a finger or your thumbs in that hole if you have trouble kind of discerning which hole you're working into. Just kind of, after you get the first few stitches into it, it becomes a little more obvious. That's two. I've got to do one more to complete that shell. And that's three. And as you can see, that's a shell. We're going to chain two. One, two. And we're going to continue double crocheting into this same hole because it's still a corner and we have to complete the corner by putting in a second shell. So that's three more double crochets into that corner. And that's two. And one more. And this double crochet makes three. And three double crochets makes a shell and two shells and two chains together in the same hole makes a corner. So you can see now we've created not only a second corner, but we've got a shell going down the middle of the first side. Now we're on to side two. We're going to chain one. We identify the next hole we're going to work into, which is this one. So this is a hole that's in the side 
It's not a corner, it's a side hole. So we put one shell into this, that's three double crochet. That's one double crochet. Two double crochet. And one more makes three. Three double crochets makes a shell. If I sound repetitive, it's because I want it to drill into your heads. <laughs> We've chained another one. So you complete your three double crochets, you chain one. The next hole is a corner. We're going to do a corner thing, which is shell, chain, chain, shell. And you guys are going to do this one on your own. Remember to keep your fingers on that hole, just so you don't have any trouble identifying where you need to put your hook. This little ball of yarn keeps sneaking up on me. Three double crochets is a shell. We're going to chain two. And we're going to double crochet three more times into that same corner hole to complete the corner of row three. And you may not believe it yet, if you're just a beginner, but very soon you'll be able to do this in your sleep. You'll be crocheting so fast, people won't know what you're doing with your fingers, and they'll just be amazed that a square is showing up underneath them. There we go. So that's two corners of row three completed, and we've got half of row, half the side of row one, or I should say half of side one done, all of side two done, and uh, we're going to continue down side three. The next hole we're working into is this one here. It's a side hole, so we have to chain one, double crochet three times into this nice big hole, because three double crochets is one shell. That's three. That's a shell. We're still on the side, so we're going to chain one. The next hole we work into is a corner again, so that's shell, chain, chain, shell. And we do all of that into this, this hole here. So we're going to continue double crocheting. And this is probably all you need to know about making a granny square, because every row from here on out is just extra shells along the side. But the corner pattern of shell, chain, chain, shell never changes. There will always be only four corners in a square from now until the end of time, <laughs> unless they change physics. And uh, every successive row just has one more shell on each side. There, I've completed my third corner, which you can see is a shell, chain, chain, shell. I'm going to continue working up this side, so I've got a chain one, and I'm going to work into this nice big friendly middle hole here. That's three more double crochets. And I'm nearing the end of row three. And row three is just four shells more than row four. And I've got one little knot here, there we go. So I've completed my side shell. I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to complete my final corner into this corner hole, which is shell, chain, chain, shell. So I'm going to go a little faster now. It's one. That's two. And that's three. Three double crochets equals one shell. That's one half of the corner made. Chain one, chain two. And the final shell into the same hole will complete that corner. That's one double crochet. Two 
two double crochets and three double crochets. Okay, you'd think we're done, but we're not quite, because in order to complete this side, we need to chain one, remember, because we started with what technically counts as a double crochet. Because that was a chain three, you're going to count one, two, three, find the top chain of that first, what counts as a double crochet, stick your hook in there, wrap your yarn, and pull it through everything. That's a slip stitch. That completes row three. Identify your corners, give it a little tug, and what a perfect darling little square that is turning into. Now I'm going to do one more row for the benefit of everybody who's a beginner. I'm going to change colors again, but like I said, from here on out you can make the square as big as you want. You could make the whole blanket just one square, or you could make them this small, or you could make them 12 inch by 12 inch, however you want to do it. But from here on out, the only thing that changes is the number of shells along the side. But the corner is always the same, and the single stitch in between straightaway shells is always the same. You just get an extra shell every single side, every successive row. So I'm going to snip my yarn. I'm going to fasten off by just pulling it back through that loop and pulling it tight. I'm going to weave it in, because I like things nice and tidy. Except for this little string hanging down here, just ignore that. <laughs> I'll get that one later. <laughs> yeah, just stick it in anywhere. You just don't want it in your way. You can always go back later and weave everything in. But it just helps neaten things up as you go. There we go. And I'm going to show this to you again. So you can see that this is three rows versus four rows. What's the easiest way to count your rows? Because it does get confusing once your granny squares start getting big. You identify your center. So you do this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show this to you on the, the solid block one because it's even harder to see. You identify your center. That's pretty easy to find. You identify your first shell of your first row. So there's one. And you count on a diagonal. One, two, three, four. Oh, four rows. One, two, three, four. Don't go up because you'll end up skipping. One, two. <laughs> go up on a diagonal. One, two, three, four. That's how you count how many rows you're at. That way you'll never lose track. Same thing here. Here's my center. Here's a shell. I'm going to count up on a diagonal. One, two, three. I've done three rows. Now we're going to do row four. So I'm going to use this nice dark green now. Slightly darker, not really dark. I'm going to create a slip knot. A slip knot is you make a loop. Now you can feed the yarn up through it with your finger, but once you get really dexterous, you just take your hook, put your hook through that hole, grab the yarn, and pull it back, and then just pull both those strings together. And that is your slip knot. I like to start in a corner, just kind of, uh, I don't know why. You can start any hole you want, but I like to start in corners. So you put your hook through that corner, and you're going to attach this color by wrapping the yarn around your hook and just pulling it back through the hole and back through that loop, and you give it a nice little tight tug, and there, you've attached it. Now to start the row, you have to chain three. One, two, three. Three chains equals one double crochet, and then we just go. So I'm not going to say anything anymore. I'm going to speed up a little bit, and if you guys need to pause it at any point, go ahead and pause it, but it's pretty much the same thing from here on out. So I'm just going to do this whole row nice and quiet. I might mutter a bit, but uh, just so you guys can kind of get an idea of what it looks like as it's coming together. So you make your first corner, which is shell, chain, chain, shell. I'm going to work over that tail so it disappears. Once you've completed a corner, you want to move into the straightaway, so I'm going to chain one. Kind of bury that little tail. one shell per side hole. It's a 
shell, chain one, because I'm still on the side. It's another side hole, so that's another single shell. So I'm heading into a corner now, but that's still the side, so another chain one. Now I'm into another corner. That's a shell, two chains, and a shell. That's shell number one, chain one, chain two. That's shell number three. I'm on another straightaway, so I'm going to chain one, and off I go again. Single shells along the sides, two shells and two chains for each corner. The nice thing about granny squares is that you're always working into a nice big space. It's not a stitch. It's not something you've got to fiddle with. You don't end up splitting your yarn or trying to dig your hook into some tiny little tight stitch. It's these nice open spaces between all the shells. I think that's why a, a granny square is such a great beginner, uh, beginner pattern. And uh, another reason why it's a great thing to have in your pattern repertoire. Granny squares are so mobile. You could literally be making a king-sized afghan, but because you have to make it in squares, you can just stuff a few balls of yarn in a, in a needle or a crochet hook in your purse and just take it anywhere. And you can make as many squares as you want on the go and just kind of keep bringing them back home. And when you've got as many as you want, you can stitch them all together. That's probably why I love making modular afghans because you don't have to make it all in one go. If you're knitting an afghan, it's a little more complicated, but we're going to get to knitting a lot later. <laughs> all right, I'm just finishing my fourth corner on my fourth row, and I'm going to finish my fourth side, and that's two sets of single shells instead of one. And this is my last shell. Always remember that you have to join your last shell with your first shell with a single chain because you want to keep that nice consistency. I come all the way back around. I'm going to count my chains, find the top one, slip stitch into it, and that is row number four. I'm going to pull out my corners. I'm going to snip my yarn. When you get really quick, you can whip these babies up in no time flat. And there is a four row granny square. Gosh, I love green and blue. And oh, there you go. From here on out, if you can make them bigger than this, you could make them smaller than this. But the pattern remains the same. The only thing that changes is that every extra row, each side gets an extra couple of shells. And that's pretty much all there is to know. Okay, so that's how you make a granny square. And just very briefly, I wanted to show you a few different examples of how you can put them together into an afghan, if that's what you're going to make. Um, this is your typical scrap afghan. So. I grabbed a whole bunch of different colors of mixed mash leftover balls of yarn that I liked. It's all roughly the same size and I made each one, let's see, we'll count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So each square is seven rows and I had a sort of a pattern going. Every single center was, was one color, row two was one color, row three was a color, and row four was a color. But rows five, six, and seven was always consistently another color, obviously, except for that one. But they're all seven <laughs> rows long. And I was just using up spare balls, um, leftover scraps. And it was kind of the same colorway, so it wound up looking 
really hearthy. I, I love this. And plus it's big fluffy yarn, so it's really, really cozy to wrap up with. Once you get them all sewn together, you can continue. This is actually not so easy to see because this is wool and it's kind of gone funny, but you can keep doing the same shell stitch all the way around. It's a little time consuming, but it's a nice way to finish it off by putting a border on. And that's how I did that one. This one was all the leftover balls of blue that I had. And this one I put together a little differently. So instead of sewing the blocks together, I single crocheted the blocks together. And you can do that by holding the blocks together, putting your hook through both blocks, and creating single crochets through both blocks at the same time. It gives you this neat sort of ridge effect. And on the underside, it just looks like you stitched it together. It's nice and flat. And I like both sides. Some days I want to just see a nice flat afghan. Some days I like this sort of ridgy, modular look. Now the when I got this all together, instead of doing shells all the way around, I actually single crocheted all the way around. And it uh, was a lot longer than, than double crocheting because double crochet obviously is a much bigger stitch. But I like the way this ended up looking because it was um, thin and tight and it made it almost look like a solid border as opposed to an open lacy one. This is one of my favorite afghans. Uh, we have it in our bedroom and um, it's just, it's perfect. It's warm but not too warm. I often put it on my feet when I'm sit or sitting watching television and I just love the monochromatic hues of all the different blues. Also a great way to use up scraps. Um, and, uh, and all those colors, all those shades of blue together just, uh, just looks like, just looks like water. I just, I just love it. So that's definitely one of my favorites. This one, this one is like candy licorice all sorts. And this I wanted to show you because every single square is a single color. Now I purposely went out and got the balls of yarn to make this afghan. I wanted hot pink, light pink, this kind of limey olive green, a turquoise, and a purple. And I like those colors together. I made each square with a much smaller hook. Um, I think each of these is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, these are six rows. So these are smaller squares, but they're all single colored. And instead of sewing them together or single crocheting them together, I actually chain them together. So I would chain, I would attach my yarn, chain up three, single crochet in this hook, or in this square corner, chain another three into this hole, chain up, chain up, chain up, and I would keep going back and forth and back and forth. So if you actually held this up properly, you'd notice that they were slightly skewed, but then each row sort of skews back the other way and it ends up being rectangular. And I just did a really simple little, tiny little border all the way around. It's, um, Kind of like a v-stitch and you know what i'll come up with a project that i can teach you that in, in a little while it's not very difficult at all um, but i wanted to keep that same lacy latticework look going on the edge and i love this one too just for the color it's also pretty warm believe it or not but uh, i just love the, the the playfulness of it and the color that it brings so you can see those are three very different kinds of afghans you get three very different effects with it but it's all the exact same granny square Big hook, fluffy yarn, warm colors, medium sized hook, tighter yarn, all the same hue, smaller hook, decidedly different colors, and all chosen for this. So this, this afghan, I purposely set out to get the colors to make this one, and these two were actually just scraps. And believe it or not, I have even more, but that's all I'm going to show you today. So if you have any questions, guys, about how to make a granny square or the different variations on a granny square or even things like um, the Irish Rose, because there are, if you Google granny square, there are a billion different kinds. People have written whole books on them. Um, ask me questions if you want. Leave them in the, the comments down below. I'm, I, I'd love to try and answer them if I can. Um, and again, if you want to see me try and make something, let me know. If you want to try and, and learn how to make something slightly bigger like an afghan, if you want to see them actually put together, let me know and I'll do a whole tutorial on that too. But um, I thought that would be a good place to start. The granny Square is a nice, basic, simple shape. It's a great building block. You can make all sorts of cool things out of it, including three-dimensional objects. And um, that's that. So, the granny Square. 
I've got something else coming near the end of this week, so stay tuned. It's a little different um, and a little more uh, a little more intense than, than the Granny Square. Uh, it's kind of like some of our other projects, and if you were able to do those, you'll have no problem with this one, and I think you'll like it too. Uh, so that's all for now, guys. We'll see you in a few days, and have a great week. We'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>